Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, on in, during the last uh, lecture, we talked about uh, uh, the plate tectonics, uh, we were talking about the different type of plates, plate boundaries, but in particular. And uh, uh, we left this uh, um, at the triple junction part. Now, uh, let us move ahead uh, and then talk about that, uh, what exactly is happening uh, in the Dead Sea region, because of uh, the, uh, the triple junction and the plates which are moving apart one another. Okay. So, this is the region which uh, is opening up and uh, is a huge valley which has been created and because of that you are having the, the strike slip motion. This is we will talk about the what is the strike slip and all that, but it is a lateral movement which is taking place in this region particularly because of the differential movement of the plates here. Okay. So, this is the Red Sea, we are having the Arabian plate which is moving um, in this direction and then uh, African plate which is moving in the, uh, the, uh, the southwest direction and we are having this uh, zone which is the Dead Sea fault zone which is having an almost a left lateral movement here. Okay. So, we will talk about this, but these are the, this type of zones which are, which are seen on the earth surface and these are developed because of the different differential plate motions on, on the earth. Now, coming to the subduction zone hazard, which is uh, extremely dangerous and this type of zone is, uh, uh, I, as I told on that day that this uh, subduction zone is present along the southeastern margin of Indian subcontinent, that is the Andaman, uh, Sumatra Andaman subduction zone. And here basically what we see is that we will have the volcanic eruptions on the overriding plate and we will have lot many. Uh, uh, like type of earthquakes, which we classify usually the deep earthquakes or the shallow earthquakes or the intermediate earthquakes. And hazard is tremendous, because uh, the hazard will not only, uh, uh, because will be not only because of the, uh, the earthquake, uh, mega earthquakes, okay, which are uh, like uh, above 9 magnitude or so, but not always it will be uh, 9 magnitude, but these are the regions which are capable of producing uh, the, the mega earthquakes on this earth surface and the, the largest one which occurred between the Nazca plate and the South American plate was the 1960 Chilean earthquake, which resulted into the mega tsunami also. And then, uh, so far if we take in terms of the magnitude, that was the magnitude of 9.5 and then what we are having the, the next one is most of the scientists or the, uh, the scientific groups, they, they list the Sumatra Andaman earthquake of 2004 as one of the uh, the largest, but the second largest earthquake on this earth uh, uh, so far recorded. Okay, and that was the magnitude 9.3. So we have uh, uh, the mega earthquakes, uh, and we have also the the secondary effect, which is what we call the the tsunami generation from this. So so this uh, uh, subduction zones are extremely dangerous in the sense uh, uh, if uh, they are close to our. Uh, subcontinent. So, definitely we have uh, two types of subduction zones in India. We are having in the eastern side, we are having uh, the Sumatra Andaman subduction zone and in the western side, we are having Makran subduction zone. So, we are been trapped from both the sides here in this sense. Then uh, moving ahead, uh, uh, as I told that uh, this uh, uh, subduction zones will have the on the overriding plate, mostly we will see the volcanic eruptions. This is one of the example from from Cascadia, which shows the, uh, the mountain chain, which com comprised of uh, several volcanic uh, uh, cones here. And uh, uh, this picture, it shows the uh, Saint, uh, Mount St. Helens. Uh, in the foreground, this is uh, Mount St. Helens, and this one is uh, your uh, Mount Rainier okay, behind. So, a uh, lot of many active volcanoes you will be able to encounter along the on the plate boundaries, if you are having the oceanic plate subducting below the continental plate. And then along with that, okay, the spreading centers, okay, mainly uh, if, you, if you see on the earth surface, uh, the, the best example is there um, in the Iceland, okay, where the uh, spreading center is, uh, is seen on the, on the, earth, on the surface, okay, uh, that is on the continent and, and passing through the, uh, the, the 
mid oceanic ridges coming onto the surface through the oceanic part actually. So, this is one of the best example where we see the example of the divergent plate boundary on the earth's surface. Okay. Then moving to another part that is the, uh, the convergence of the oceanic and the continental plates. So, we, we see there is a best example, but this type of configuration is seen in many places. So, this is just to take an example that what we are having the Nazca plate and the Af South American plate, we are having the, the volcanic eruptions on the, uh, on, on the overriding plates. Okay. And here what we see as I have already explained about that, if we are having the, uh, the plate which is subducting down, uh, then only we will be having the, uh, the uh, so we will have the melting of uh, rocks and that will result into the formation of magma and rising uh, up to the surface in form of uh, through the volcanic cones and all that. Okay. So, when an oceanic plate collides with the continental plates, the plate carrying the heavier oceanic plates. Okay. So, the heavier one as we have learned in the beginning also that uh, the, uh, the oceanic plates are the heavier plates and uh, compared to the continental plates. Okay. So, the heavier plate will subtract below the lighter ones. Okay. And when, when they, they reach the, uh, the, 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 the crust, when it reach into the mantle region, it will melt and uh, um, uh, result into the formation of magma. Now, numerous trenches. Now, this is the region which I, was, I also talked on that day that the, the junction of two plates okay, is marked by a deeper part, which is termed as the trenches. Okay. And these trenches are, are seen at many uh, junctions where we are having uh, the subductions taking place. Okay. And one of the, the best example is the Mariana Trench, which is one of the deepest. Okay. So, uh, numerous narrow trenches, thousands of kilometer long and a, about 8 to 10 kilometer deep. This is what the Mariana Trench is, okay, uh, is located at the Pacific Ocean. Okay. This is along the, uh, this thing. Okay. And then trenches are the deepest part on the earth's surface. As we have seen that the, 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 the highest point on the earth's surface is the mountain Everest and the deepest part on the, on the ocean floor is the Mariana, is along, usually seen along the subduction zones. Okay. So, examples are the volcanic cars, alpine chains, Andes, mountains and all that. Okay. So, these are having the volcanic chain or volcanic arc we can say. Now, uh, uh, this is just to show the example that if you are having looking at the Andes mountains, then we have uh, uh, this is the, the trench portion we are having which is the which marks the plate boundary between the two plates that is Nazca plate and the South American plate. And we have uh, the mountain chains which is the Andes along this coast. Okay. And this comprise of several active volcanoes. So, wherever we are having the subduction zones, we will have the, uh, the volcanic uh, mountain chains. Okay. So, I will just quickly move and try to show that couple of uh, very good uh, locations. This is what you see on the, uh, on the overriding plate, the volcanoes. This is from Chile, some of the active volcanoes. And this is again showing the same, uh, uh, explain the same uh, things which I have been talking about that we are having the ocean plate going down and we are having. The, but this is an example of the oceanic oceanic plate, it is not the continental plate. And again here, the heavier oceanic plate uh, will subduct below the lighter ones and the whole older ones will be comparatively heavier, the older oceanic plates will be comparatively heavier than the younger ones. This is a wonderful example, uh, which explains about uh, the, uh, the movement of uh, the oceanic plate, uh, when it passed through or is it passed over the, uh, the, uh, the magma chamber. And the mountain chain, uh, the, the, the island uh, uh, chain, which developed because of the, uh, the formation of the, uh, or the volcanic cones and all that. So, this is one of the example of Hawaii, where it shows that how the oceanic plate uh, moved above the magma chamber and whenever when it stayed at the, the, the above the magma chamber there was a volcanic eruption uh, uh, which resulted on the surface but but when it moved ahead those volcanoes become dormant actually so we have the chain of uh, such um, uh, volcanic cones so uh, this this particularly what we call is the hot spot and the absolute motion because you can understand 
that when it moved, because they have dated, the scientists have dated the, the, uh, the rocks and they know that when exactly it was above the active uh, magma chamber. Okay. So, we say that there is an hot spots and absolute uh, motion. So, during the 19th century, American geologist James Dana, he observed that the age of the extinct volcanoes. So, these are, these are the dormant volcanoes, which we are having okay, in the Hawaii island chain increases as one gets farther away from the active volcanoes on the big island. So, these are the active ones here, we are having this is active one and if you move away, then you are getting the older ones. Okay. And the earthquake occurs only near the active ones, but if you, if you move and uh, away from the, the active uh, uh, chambers, we, you will not be able to see even the, uh, the earthquake occurrence also and they, they are basically dormant. Okay. Uh, dormant volcanoes. So, hot spots and absolute again that part. So, this uh, uh, was been proposed and uh, that, uh, that the, the hot spot lies anchored deep uh, into the mental okay, beneath the Hawaii. So, this is the, uh, the source for the, the, the volcanic uh, eruptions and the magma which is coming up on the surface. Okay. So, it says that there is an hot uh, buoyant plume of mental rocks continue, continuously rise rises from the hot spots okay. and particularly melting to form magma at the bottom of the lithosphere. Okay. So, this is what we, we also discussed in, uh, in earlier part. Okay. So, if the sea floor moves over the mental plume, this is important. So, this is when what we were talking about that it is, it is sitting above the uh, mental plume. So, if it moves above over the mental plume, an active volcano could remain over the magma source only about a million years. Okay. So, it remains because the motion is quite slow. So, it remains for, for uh, millions of years, but, but yes of course, uh, this is a quite uh, a longer period for in the. So, and then uh, if you look at, uh, this is what they have, they have tried to discuss about that, there was a change in the plate motion direction actually. Okay. So, when plate moved over the, the magma, active magma chamber, but at some place, that it, it changed the direction. So, this was the time uh, when, when the direction of the plate changed. Okay. It, it used to move in this direction that is in uh, northwest, but it, then it changed to almost towards the uh, uh, north northwest. Okay. So, this is, uh, this is one of the, uh, the best example which explains that uh, when exactly how we can, we can know the plate motions also. Okay. So, this is what they, they say that at around uh, a sharp change in the direction occurred at around 43 million years ago in this region. Okay. Now, coming to the oceanic oceanic uh, convergence, as uh, the previous one we were talking about the uh, oceanic continental, here the heavier one okay, that is the, uh, the plate underneath uh, uh, bends deeper, that is the heavier plate will subduct, heavier plate will uh, uh, subduct as compared to the uh, uh, the overriding lighter plates. Okay. And this is the example of uh, the Mariana Trench, where we are having the, the deepest ocean on the earth, okay, which is almost like 11,000 meters deep. Okay. So, here uh, this is basically related, we, we, when we talk about the subduction zone, different type of subduction zone, we classify subduction zones as either the Mariana type subduction zones or we say there is an, uh, uh, the another type of subduction zone where uh, the, the plates are comparatively uh, the subducting shallower. Okay. So, this is, uh, uh, this is one of the example where the, uh, the subducting plate is uh, deeping or, or, or subducting below at a greater angle resulting into the deepest part uh, at, the, at the contact of two, two plates here. So, this is an uh, uh, example what um, I was talking about that we also have the, um, the, uh, the subducting uh, plate which is uh, and, and which has resulted into the formation of the trench and which we, we, we call as an Sumatra Andaman trench. And this was one of the, uh, the source area for 2004 Sumatra Andaman earthquake and the mega, mega tsunami and that region which killed lot many people. Okay. So, this is the, uh, um, uh, just to show that how uh, the plate boundaries are, uh, are seen 
uh, uh, close to the Indian subcontinent. This is your the, the, the southernmost tip of the Indian subcontinent, that is a Kar Nicobar. And then we move further, we get into the Andaman Islands and all that. Okay. And lot many earthquakes which occur are aligned or they are they are oriented along the the, uh, the trench part. Okay. Now coming to the uh, the the final one that is the continental continental convergence or collision. We are talking about the best example. What we see on the Earth is the Alpine Himalayan mountain chain, and this is the example we'll be talking about the the Himalayan uh, mountain chain, which occurs. So here, what we see, of course, uh, 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 the question comes that there is an subduction which has been seen here, okay. but then finally what we, we are having is the collision between the two plates, these are both are continental continental, both plates are continental. But in, in earlier times when they, uh, when they subjected, uh, this, this, uh, this plate subducted, it had an ancient, that is an oceanic plate was ahead of it, which subducted initially beneath the continental region. And finally, uh, when, the, when the time came, that is the both two uh, ocean continental plates came together or came near to each other, they collided and no more uh, subduction is there. But yes, of course, we cannot say that it is completely collision, but partial subduction is also seen in this region. Okay. So, when two continental uh, uh, continents meet head on, neither is subducted, okay, because both are having almost similar uh, uh, density and all that. So, they are, they are relatively lighter. So, because the continent rocks are relatively lighter and like to uh, collide, like two icebergs, they collide and resist downward motion. Okay. So, neither of uh, them wants to go down because of their density. So, they, they eventually result into the collision and, and that collision, uh, what we see uh, uh, has resulted into the crumpling of the rocks and rising up of the uh, the mountain ranges, okay, and that what we are looking at the buckled up or pushed up material in form of the mega mountain chains like Himalayas, okay. So type of uh, convergent mount margins, if we look at, is collision zones that marks the closure of the former ocean which were in front of them, okay. So we, in terms of the Himalaya, we see that there was an Tethys Sea uh, region which closed down slowly. And finally, what we are looking at is the, uh, the formation of the Himalaya. But before the Himalayas, we had, of course, we, if we talk about that there was an subduction. So, we had volcanic eruptions in this region and finally, uh, we lost, kept, keep on losing the Tethian Sea, a region and now we are having the, the complete collision and coupling of the material coming up on the Indian plate from the Eurasian side. Okay. So, we have Alps, we have Appalachian, we have Himalayas, these are one of the, uh, there are few of the examples which talks about the collision zones on the earth surface. Now, continental collisions as uh, we have been talking about the Himalayan region. So, if we see that it had an old oceanic uh, plate before which subducted, okay, which resulted in a subduction. So, we had partially melting of the, uh, uh, the rocks also and resulted into some of the, the volcanic eruptions also before, but now what we see that it is now no more feeding of the oceanic plate is, uh, is taking place uh, in this collision zone, but now what we see is the crumpling of, of the, uh, the material resulting into the formation of the rock wedge and this wedge is what day by day it is rising up and we are having the higher Himalayas. Okay. So, we, we see uh, the best example of the collision on the earth's surface. Okay. So, this is again uh, a cartoon which explains that how uh, it happened. So, this is the first stage when uh, we had like uh, the oceanic uh, crust which subducted below the continental one and then we had behind the oceanic crust, we had the, the continental crust and then slowly this area got deformed and it started closing up. Okay. So, this is closing up of the Tethian Sea and finally, this disappeared. So, we, we do not see any ocean uh, anymore in this region, but earlier there was an ocean and which was, which was uh, the part of the oceanic crust. Okay. And then finally, what we see right now is the formation of Himalaya. So, we have a topography and we have drainage 
we have different climates, um, the, like we have the, uh, the seasons, okay, monsoon and all that, and we have streams which are flowing down, and we are having the, uh, the deposition in the Indo-Gangetic plains. Okay. So, we are having the fertile land, which got developed after the, uh, the collision, and not before that. Okay. And now, uh, what we, we see that no more sinking of the oceanic plate takes place uh, in this, uh, this zone. So, if we look at the Himalayan part that how it evolved, okay, as we discussed in the beginning, that it was far south of equator, okay, it was far south located equator and which was the form of the in the, in the, uh, the form of the Gondwana land. Okay. So, before uh, the breaking up of Pangaea, uh, at around uh, uh, 200 million years ago, India was a large island situated south of equator near Australia and all that. Okay. So, slowly it moved and about 80 million years ago, India was located roughly 6500 to 7000 kilometers south of the Asian continent. Okay. It moved at a, a rate of almost like 9 meter per century. This is very important, okay. just uh, keep in mind what we are talking here. Okay. So, it was the speed was almost like uh, it was moving at the rate of 9 meter per century. But at around 40 to 50 million years back, its northward movement slowed down almost by half. Okay. It slowed down almost by half. Now, this was the time when the collision started. Okay. So, this is the time when most of the geologists are taking in, uh, into consideration that f around 40 to 50 billion million years back, uh, the collision started. Okay. And that resulted into the slowing down or decreasing the rate of the the movement okay and that interrupted the rate of the movement and that was the time or the beginning of the rapid uplift of himalayas okay so the mighty himalayas almost covering an area of east west if you take around 2900 kilometers is a net creation of your continental continental collision so that is between the two plates the indian plate in the south and north we are having the eurasian plate okay because both this continental landmass had almost same rock density, one plate could not subduct under the another other one. Okay. So, this is one of the reason which we were talking about the, uh, the importance of the heavier plate and the lighter plates in terms of the density. Okay. So, this phenomena of deformation resulted into the formation of Himalayan ranges. So, I will just move ahead, maybe this is all we have discussed. So, Finally, if we look at, uh, so we have uh, because of the plate motions and uh, how the, uh, the ocean floors and the, uh, the continental floors were been sculptured because of the plate motion, we see the, the deepest part on the, on, on the earth that is 11,035 meters and then we are having almost like 8,800 meters high Everest okay, on the earth surface. And in total, if we look at the, uh, the tectonic boundaries or the, uh, or the plate boundaries, we are having the ring of fire, we are having the mid oceanic ridges, which are running uh, across the, the, and then we are having the Mediterranean belt, this is alpine uh, Himalayan chain. Okay. And this is the, the area where we have the all active volcanoes, which are been linked. Okay. So, this is the ring of fire or the Pacific ring of fire, we can say. Okay. So, these are the major areas of high seismicity okay. and so, these are the hazardous area on the earth surface, which triggers lot many earthquakes and the volcanic eruptions and tsunamis and all that. Okay. So, in particularly if we take uh, now coming to the Indian part, okay, we have almost like this on Himalayan front or the Himalayan range, which is the contact between the Eurasian plate and the Indian plate. Now, as uh, I was talking about that, uh, there was a relative plate motion, which has been, been measured between uh, uh, these two plates. Okay. And uh, now, uh, with, the, with the help of uh, like uh, support of Ministry of Earth Science, we are putting lot many GPS stations in the Himalayan region uh, to understand the, uh, the, the rate of uh, deformation in this area. And we are having GPS stations also in this region that is Andaman region and of course, in the Kutch region. And relatively, we, are put, we have couple of stations, which are 
uh, in the Indian plate part that is the peninsular part. Okay. Now, uh, uh, the studies have proved that the, uh, the plate motions between the, uh, the, the point here in the Bangalore and uh, with respect to the Eurasian plate, it is almost like 50 millimeter. Okay. So, the plate motion between the two uh, is around 50 millimeter uh, and between this point and you are having the, uh, the Himalayan front, we are having around 5 millimeter only. Okay. So, 45 millimeter is still left out. Okay. Out of that, this region that is the Himalayan zone is taking up almost like 20. So, as we were discussing about that uh, the Indian uh, plate motion. Okay. So, if you take from the, from the Bangalore part, we are almost having like uh, 50 uh, millimeter or, or which is between the, the Indian plate over here, that is the point between um, on the Indian plate on the southern side and the Eurasian plate is a 50 millimeter. And uh, 5 millimeter only has been consumed across the, the plate and rest 20 millimeter has been consumed along the, the Himalayan front. Okay. So, this Himalayan range is taking up almost 20 millimeter and rest what is been left out, let us say 25 and half, half has been taken up by the Eurasian uh, plate part. Okay. So, uh, based on this, what we can understand is the, the region along the Himalayan zone is, uh, is comparatively like um, uh, deforming much, much faster as what we see in the, uh, the plate, uh, rest of the plate. Okay. Hence, more hazard can be expected or is expected along the Himalayan region as compared to the rest of the Indian plate. Now, this is what it explains that how the whole Indian, because we cannot say that only the Himalayan part over here is uh, here uh, like uh, resulting into the deformation, but, but the rest of the plate is also under the deformation. Okay. This explains, this cartoon explains that uh, the Himalaya, not only the Himalaya, but also the rest of the, uh, the Indian plate is getting flexed up. Okay. And that is one of the reason why we, we, we had an earthquake in Bhuj, we had an earthquake in Latur and all that and also in Jabalpur, that is in the, the Indian plate, uh, the peninsular side, we, we, we see this type of earthquakes. Okay. So, the hazard remains in this region, this is, uh, this we will be talking when, when we talk more about the, the falls and we talk about more about the earthquakes in the, the ancient earthquakes and present earthquake in Himalayas and of course, we will, I will try to talk a brief, uh, uh, briefly about the, the recent uh, earthquakes which occurred in uh, 2015 in Nepal also. But in, in short, if you look at, uh, we have uh, the Himalayan front or the Himalayan region had several large magnitude earthquakes and devastating earthquakes in the past, okay, which were, which occurred in like for in Kashmir in 1555, then we are having 1905 earthquake in Kangada and then we are having 1934 earthquake, these are all large magnitude earthquakes, this 1934 is in Nepal, Bihar and all that. And then further towards the east, we had 1950 earthquake of Upper Assam. So, we will talk when uh, in detail when we are talking about the, the earthquakes in Himalayan region. Uh, but in short, if we look at in terms of the hazard, so based on these earthquakes which are known from, uh, from the region like Kutch or maybe in Himalayan region, uh, as the data is coming up. Okay, we have been changing, or we we change the uh, the seismic hazard map of India. So this is the seismic zonation map of India, which before 2001 we had five zones. Okay, starting from one to five, but now we are not having. We have already excluded the zone one, and we are having from two to five. Okay, so Indian seismic zonation maps since 1962. So, it, came, it, it was been revised at number of uh, locations or the number of uh, uh, number of times when, when more data came in. And finally, what we, we see, that it was revised in 2000, after 2001 uh, Bhuj earthquake. And you can see here, that we have only uh, four zones starting from 2 and going up to 5. Okay. So, because the Bhuch earthquake resulted into different uh, intensity, what earlier was been predicted or was uh, was assumed that this area will have this type of, or this much of intensity 
or ground shaking, it was different, which was experienced in, in 2001. Okay. So, if you look at uh, uh, this was this is an older one, which had uh, from uh, 1 to 5, but now we are having from 2 to 5 only. Okay. So, there is a change in that. So, then this type of information is extremely important for the civil engineers, when we are taking into consideration uh, that where we are we are going and constructing our our structures okay either it is in zone 1 or it is in zone 5 because that will vary based on the the building codes okay in different areas okay so this is uh, what i have to talk in this one so thank you so much